Hey, Merry Christmas! Good morning, Redemption! Thank you so much for joining us today for our special online Christmas service. With it being Christmas, we thought it'd be great to talk a little bit about Christmas traditions and actually let you know some of what our Christmas traditions are, right? Right. Okay. Usually on Christmas morning, uh, one of the first things that happens is we get up and we have our coffee. Coffee! Because coffee. Gotta have coffee. I might yes. have been up a little too late wrapping presents at the last minute, so yes, must we have coffee. We won't even go there. It used to be that the kids could get up at any time, we'd be sleeping in, and they had stockings to open, and now, mm. usually we're up in the quiet morning with a fire, with our coffee, and the adult kids are sleeping in. So if so. your kids woke you up at five or six this morning, there is hope one day they will sleep in. You'll be there one day. Don't worry. Yes. And after that, stockings and stuff, we have a special Christmas breakfast that we always do. And that's kind of a tradition that came from my family. A special Swedish coffee bread that we Which make. I've learned to oh, make now. Oh, it's so good. We have that with tons of butter. And it's got uh, cinnamon and sugar on it and everything. And then uh, we have scrambled eggs. Uh, cheddar cheese, summer, summer sausage, sausage, and orange juice. And it's always those things. Pretty simple breakfast, but it is so good, and we have it every year. I love it. And everyone looks forward to it. Yep. And then we will take time after to read the Christmas story with the family and pray together and um, and then open presents. Yeah. And We do that throughout the day. It might take all day. And there's one other special thing that for us is special that that I do only I get to only do it on Christmas Day it's so like it's my favorite Christmas album so I grew up listening to this album when I was a kid and I remember on Christmas Day sometimes I would get up in the morning and I would get the record and I would put up my dad's stereo you know hooked up to his big speakers and I would play that Christmas album and uh, one song in there so it, and I started doing it with my kids well They've got to the point where it's like, that is our only our Christmas Day album that I can mm. listen to. I can't listen to it any other day. So we play it like on repeat all day long. And um, I, they're probably wondering what that album is. I should I should probably share it with them and tell them. Uh, because I, I've actually got the album here. Yeah. Um, I think this is my mom and dad's album. I think I, I kind of inherited from them early. It's the Oak Ridge Boys Christmas album album it is amazing i mean look at these guys you've got the oak ridge boys right what could be better that massive beard right that bass singer the high tenor oh it's got everything that you would love and uh, my favorite song on this too is the song jesus is born today and uh, i'm gonna give you a little taste of what that is i just love this song it's got everything oh yeah triangle and at some point, everybody is singing. Oh, yeah. We'll be singing yeah. along. Mm. Orchestra. It's got all those hits. I love it. It's a good song to air band to. Oh, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. She has set me free. Oh, yes. He's getting into it. Birthday. Birthday. It's got the big bass. Oh, we love it. Drum fill. Here we go. Here we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah! All right, I love it. Anyway, love you got to go find that. It. It's on Spotify, the Oak Ridge Boys Christmas album. You will love that. Hey, and speaking of Christmas, we have a few uh, Christmas announcements for you also today. The first one being next Sunday is January 1st, and uh, that's a special Sunday also. We are going to meet in person, but we are going to meet at 12 o'clock down at the hub, okay, for a chance to get together, mm -hmm. uh, prayer and communion all together. It's going to be a great time to start the new year off, commit everything to God, and uh, just to pray for that th those things that he's going to be doing for our building, for this year ahead, all the things he's going to be doing in our church and our lives as a family too. So you won't want to miss that 12 o'clock noon on New Year's Day. The next week on the 8th of January, we'll be back at Cedarcrest, and we start a new series in the Old Testament. So that'll be yep. another that'll be great. Good so we'll be start back the at the school on January eighth. Regular services there. Then just to give you guys a heads up, after that we are excited. We got some special news. We are headed out on a sabbatical for the next three months for January, February, and March. So we will not be there. We've got great people going to be taking care of you though and being in charge and doing worship and stuff like that. We're going to be taking some road trip time, go down to see our kids, uh, going to a ministry retreat, doing all kinds of fun things like that. So we'll fill you in on all those details, but just to give you a heads up on that. And we will be back uh, by Easter time. 
Speaking of Christmas, today is our fifth Sunday in Advent, and we have a special Advent reading for you today, too. And on this fifth Sunday in Advent, we celebrate the Christ child. Trent's going to light the candle, and I'm going to read from 1 John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I have this quote from Henry Nouwen that says, The Lord is coming, always coming. When you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will recognize Him at any moment of your life. Life is Advent. Life is recognizing the coming of the Lord. Um, I love that, and it ties in with um, a song that we're going to share with you in a minute called um, I Heard the Bells. And this song was written by a guy who faced some very severe hardships in life. And uh, he, he wrote these words. It was the, during a time during the war was going on, too, when he heard bells ringing and um, a choir singing Peace on Earth. It was around Christmas time. And he had this overwhelming sense that, man, how can this be? All These people are singing this song, but around him he, he just saw such despair and helplessness, hopelessness. And um, he wrote some words to a poem. And uh, the pain and suffering he was really facing is, is in these words. You can really hear when it says, And in despair I bow my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But the neat thing was, even in that, he still had a hope in Christ and a hope in God. And uh, you can find God anywhere, even in hardships. So I don't know what you're going through this Christmas, whether you've got all your family and things are going great, or maybe there's things, things in your life that are just difficult and hard. Know that God is there for you through all of that, and He cares for you, right? As the words say here, then the bells pealed more loud, and He knew God is not dead, nor does He sleep. The wrong will fail, the right prevail and peace on earth, goodwill to men. So we pray for you and your family, peace on you and your family this Christmas. And I heard the bells on Christmas Day Their old familiar carols play And wild and sweet on earth good will to men and thought oh, as the day had come the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken sun Peace on earth, good will to men. I can hear them. I can hear them. I can hear them. I can. Hear
Hey, Redemption Church, happy Christmas Sunday. And what I love about today is this reality that we are doing church at your house. That is right, we are all coming to your place, and so I hope you have enough like cocoa and cookies and coffee to go around for all of us because we're crashing your pad. Okay, so we're not physically coming over, but here's what's really cool. We're doing church in hundreds of locations all simultaneously as we watch this together. And, and I love that kind of thing. In part, I love it because, again, it just reminds us that our community of faith is bigger than just when we come together on Sunday. But I also love the fact that when we do it this way on a day like today, it gives us a chance to tell the staff at Cedar Crest High School, man, we love you guys. Thank you for coming in week in, week out, opening the building, turning on the lights, cranking up the heat, everything else so that we can meet as a church. See, today they are able to be at home with their loved ones. We're giving them the day off. We've actually compensated them for this day as well, just to say we love you. Thank you for what you do. And so they get to be with their family and friends, and then we all get to be together as a community of faith in this particular medium. So I think that's really cool. The other thing I think is really cool is the fact that Christmas is in fact falling on a Sunday. And it reminds me of how this is the confluence of different parts of the Jesus story that really should speak to our hearts. In fact, you may not be aware of this, but the early church was predominantly Jewish. And in the Jewish uh, legal code and system, there was a particular day of the week that was meant for rest. It was the Sabbath, and that was on Saturday. But when the early Jewish converts to following Jesus wanted to worship Christ, they said, well, we don't want to violate the Saturday Sabbath. That's a part of our tradition. And so they began to meet on Sunday, the first day of the week. But they called that the Lord's Day. And they did that because it was the day that commemorated when Jesus rose from the dead. And so in an interesting sort of way, when we take sort of the day that we celebrate his birth and how it coincides on the same day that we celebrate his resurrection, I just think about how that kind of ties the whole story together. This story where God comes into the world, born into poverty, born into humility, born into this idea of gentle and lowly, and he did it to rescue us. In fact, throughout Advent, we've been tracking that entire story, this grand story of God, right? That's more than seven dispensations or three ages or two testaments, but this one story. A story that began in Genesis when we lost our relationship with God, but how God made a promise that there would be one that would come again and undo the damage and bring back hope and joy and peace and do it all in the scope of love. We saw that same problem promise was then given to Abraham. And it's like, through you, I will bless the nations by this offspring. We saw how Isaiah talked about the coming offspring that would be born of a woman, born of a virgin girl, and he would change the world. And then we see that story where there's Mary and Joseph and shepherds and angels and and these, these mystics that come eventually from the east and they bring gifts to the child. That is the story that we have followed. And yet what I think is most amazing about that story is the more grand and eternal nature of it. That before Eden, before Magi and teenage kids in the middle of the Middle East having this child that is thrust upon them, right, as the great story of God, we see that God's story goes all the way back to eternity past. And it was even there that the plan was in place. And it was there that God knew we would fail And where we failed, he would succeed and he would step in. And he wouldn't step in as the mighty reigning king that everybody would associate as a king, but he would come in as the lowly servant to us. See, where Matthew tells the birth narrative from one point of view, and Luke tells the birth narrative from another point of view, and it kind of reminds us of how God came to this world, I love how John decides to tell the story because he anchors it in that eternity past and reminds us of just what's really happening in this Christmas celebration. It's not just the birth of another prophet or an amazing person, but it's the coming of God to be among us. That is profound. In fact, I wanna turn our attention just briefly here to the Gospel of John chapter one, because that's what anchors kind of in some ways John's origin story of Jesus and the incarnation, which I know that's a fancy word. It just means in meat. 
And the idea is God came to be in meat, incarnate, right? Incarnate means he came to dwell among us in human physical form. And so John begins to talk about this. And he says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And so we have two different persons in play in the very first verse. There's someone called the Word, and then there's also someone who is God. And what John is trying to ground us in as far as an idea is that it's not just, you know, like there's this one person that reveals himself in three different forms, but rather there are three different persons who are comprised of the Trinity. And one member is God the Father, as we see here, and the other is this kind of mysterious idea of the Word. But in their culture, the word was the foundation of everything. It was like the, the, the DNA of all existence was the word. And so John's tapping into that and saying, hey, there is this other player there at the beginning with God the Father. And they're two different persons, but they are one in essence. They're co-equal. They're co-eternal. They've always been, and they've got a plan. So it says, he was in the beginning with God. So again, two different persons. And all things were made through him, and without him, not anything that was made that was made. So what he's saying is, this mysterious word is the creator of all things. The cosmos, our planet, this beautiful snow that I'm standing in, and he's the maker of you and me. And so when we read in Genesis that in the beginning God created, John's unpacking a little bit more and saying, well, when I say God created, I'm talking about the second person of the Trinity, the word who was with the Father, he is the one that created. More than this, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome it. And so in this person, the Word is light and life and creation itself. Everything we need, everything we crave, he is the founder of that for us. And so you see the magnitude of, of this particular person, this being that does everything by mere words. And then we dive into verse 14. It was this word of light and life and truth that became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the one who just speaks and all things are made, the one who contains perfect life and perfect light He then decided to come among us. And like I said, he came lowly. He came in this frail human form. He suffered the things that we suffered. He experienced fear and grief and anxiety and joy and frustration. He experienced all of that. He experienced temptation. He knows what it's like to feel the pressure of life. Now we know that he did not fall, he did not fail, and he didn't sin. But he gets the pain. And yet in that, he also comes with what? grace and truth. In fact, it goes on to say, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For law was given through Moses. The rules came through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. See, I look at that part of the story and I go, see, God came into the world not to scold us, not to shame us, not to bash us, saying, I made all of this and you're just driving it into the ground. No, he's like, no, I made all of this and I made you and I know your plight. I know your challenge. I know the brokenness of this world. I know the hardship and hardness at times of your person. And thus I have come with the grace to rescue you and the truth to guide you. See, that's what this holiday is really all about. In fact, when I think about Christmas, I think about the show uh, Undercover Boss. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's like a CEO, they decide to give up their, their prime job and they take on kind of a position within the company. They act as though they're new to things. They're trying to learn the ropes and they spend like a week hanging out with everybody. And from that, they go like, oh, I didn't realize that job's that hard. Oh, I didn't realize we weren't shoring up enough things for you. Oh, I see you need more supplies or whatever it is. And then at the end of the week, they sit down with different employees and are like, thank you for illuminating me to the real world in the innards of our company. And I go, well, is that what Jesus did? Kind of. See, the difference is those CEOs, they're moving from ignorance to knowledge when they do it. But Jesus had perfect knowledge already. He didn't need to go like, oh, that's the human condition. Once I lived it, I get it now. I'm going to be a more compassionate and, and gracious God. He didn't do it that way. He's like, no, I know the human condition's hard and they need to know that I know. 
And so I will come and I will dwell among them. I will, I will experience what they experience. I will feel the fatigue of the human condition so that they know, man, my grace is sufficient. My love runs deep. I am willing to go to the depths to rescue you. That is the beauty of the incarnation. That is the story of this child that we celebrate born today. That is what we most care about because God so cared for us. And so on this Christmas morning, I pray that you are encouraged I pray that you feel the sense of God's peace and joy and hope and love and that you know how far God is willing to go for you, right? That it's not shallow, it's not religious, it's not sappy, it's not hard, cold, and crusty, you know, like, no, like God says, I love you so much. I'm so passionate for you. I will come and be just like you so that you can know me. And from that, you can have life. And you can have life abundantly. Hey, thanks again so much for being a part of our online Christmas service today. We hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas day. Have a great New Year's. And we will see you again on January 1st, 12 o'clock down at the lot. Okay, take care. Merry Christmas. And Trent's going to light the candle. And our scripture is in John 1. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We should do this again. (laughs) (laughs) How many clicks?